Hey, it's Paul from HowToPlayBass.com. Got the fourth in our series of lessons of Michael Jackson bass lines. This one's actually a Jackson's tune. So uh, the period between when they were kids and when they were the Jackson 5, when they were growing up, and before Michael Jackson went off and did Off the Wall and Thriller and those kind of stuff, as a, those kind of songs and albums as a solo artist. Um, so this is, would be sort of 77, 78, something like that. Um, the tune we're looking at today is called Shake Your Body Down to the Ground. Another synth bass line tune. Um, you can get through playing the entire tune with a very simple two bar bass line and just repeat it over and over again. And the song's built off this bass line. Um, in the original, there are um, every eight bars, every 16 bars, at various sections, there are um, fills to add some variety to the bass line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you the very basic bass line, and then I'm going to run through four fills, um, and you can alternate playing those fills at the appropriate sections um, and use those four fills that I show you as a way to build up some fills of your own. Um, if you want to go to the original recording and transcribe all the original fills that the original keyboard bass player played, there's some really, really interesting things happening, um, but there's literally about 20 or 25 different fills, and um, I don't have time in this lesson to go through all of them. Some of them are also quite complex. You get some um, 16th note triplets happening, stuff like that. We'll look at one fill with a 16th note triplet. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. Before we head over to the lesson and look at the basic riff, just a reminder, if you're not already subscribed to my e -zine, click on the link underneath if you're watching on YouTube. Um, go to my website, find the subscribe page. You get a series of free lessons as a thank you for subscribing, plus there's a free monthly lesson as well, so it's definitely worth doing. Go and do that, um, and then come back and watch the rest of the lesson, and we'll start with this basic two-bar riff pattern. So let's start with the very basic two bar pattern. Play with the metronome a few times slowly and then we'll talk through the notes. Two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, so that's the basic riff. Um, metronome set about 95. The original's um, a little bit faster than that, as you'll hear if you go to the original. Um, it's basically made up of a few notes. You've got the low G, third fret of the E string. You've got the octave G, fifth fret of the D string. You've got open D string. You've got F natural at the third fret of the D string and E at the second fret of the D string. The first bar is this. What you've got is low G, high G, high G, D, F natural, D, E, D. And those Ds almost function almost as, um, almost like a, like, almost like a dead note because they're, the tempo's so quick of the original and they're just sixteenth note durations that you barely, barely hear them. But they but putting so you could play them with a dead note, but with the open D they they do give the line just a bit of I don't know, they just grease the line up, give it a bit of funk. Okay, and then the second bar is very similar. Except what you've got is F F E D, much squarer feel, eighth notes. So the first line, so it's almost like a question and answer in some ways. So that um, second bar, F, F, E, D, in eighth notes is the last four uh, eighth notes of that pattern. Um, and that's the basic pattern that the song's built on. Um, and if you were playing this live and just played that, you'd get by and it wouldn't be too much of a big deal. Um, but let's go and look at some, I'm going to show you four variations or four fills that you can throw in at appropriate points in the song. Okay, the first fill, um, I'll play through, it'll come in in the fourth bar. One, two, three, four. 
fill several times there so you could hear it the fill bar is a very simple variation um, of the second bar of the pattern here's the fill bar pattern played really slow so what you've got is low G high G high G open D two eighth notes F eighth note E all as before but then instead of going down to the open D string we're going to C and hammering on to D, third and fifth frets of the A string. And that's the fill. Very simple. Very important with these fills that you practice them. Um, you practice the fill, get your fingers used to the pattern of the fill, but practice coming out of the fill and going into the groove. Um, so just practicing it in two bar sections is a good way. Two, three, four. Like that, and practicing it over and over again. So not only does the playing of the fill become second nature, but also continuing on from the fill and making sure that that fill doesn't interrupt the flow of your groove. Um, that's really important. OK, let's go and look at another fill. OK, this next fill, um, basically it's a 16th note fill on the last beat of the fill bar. So everything, you'd play that as normal and then you've got the fill bar in. I'll play it in context with the rest of the pattern. Two, three, four. Here's the fill bar. Okay, so let's look at the notes on that. So again, you've got the low G, high G, high G, open D, two eighth notes on the F natural, and then you've got the fill itself, which is E, second fret of the D string, open D string, A sharp, B, first and second frets of the A string, um, and then you're back into the riff. And again, you can practice that in two bar sections. Um, really important that you get the fingering smooth. And that, that also, you then get the transition back into the original um, pattern, which is the foundation of the tune. Okay, the next fill uses glisses. Glisses are what you might call slides. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to slide from E flat here, the 13th fret of the D string, and we're going to slide from F natural at the 8th fret of the A string. So I'll play it in context so you can hear this, um, and the slide will come in the fourth bar. Two, three, four. And again, here that you can practice it in two bar phrases so you can actually practice the fill and then practice going back into the groove. So, literally, that second bar is. So you've got low G, the two high Gs as before, and then you go to the E flat and then to the F. So E flat again, 13th fret of the D string, F, 8th fret of the A string. Um, 
very simple fill, but keyboard bass players use a lot of glisses, um, a lot of those kind of movements with pitch wheels um, and stuff like that. And it sounds pretty cool, um, and that's quite an easy fill to put in and and do the job of the fill, which is which is to mark the end of one section and the start of another section. Um, so don't forget to do the practice where you go back into the groove as well. Um, and that will get you used to the sound, used to how the fill feels under your fingers and also get you used to going back to the groove. Let's go and look at the next fill. Okay, the next fill 16th note based again, um, but the fills on the last two beats of the fill bar. Play it through with the metronome in context, then we'll talk through the notes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, you can see that's a bit more complex. So what we've got in that fill bar, we've got low G, high G, high G as normal, and then you've got B flat to C hammer on. We'll do the locations in a second. F to G hammer on. F open D string C B flat. Then yeah, back into the riff. So those locations. B flat to C. 3rd and 5th frets of the G string, F to G, 3rd and 5th frets of the D string, F at the 3rd fret of the D string again, D, C at the 3rd fret of the A string, B flat at the 6th fret of the E string, and then you're back to the riff. And that's that fill. Play it slowly. One thing I do with fills like this before I start working them with a metronome is do something like this. And just repeat the fill over and over. So that you get you get your hand gets used to the how the fill lays out underneath your fingers. And then start working that towards performance tempo and then as you get comfortable with the with how the pattern lays out under your fingers then you can start putting it in with the metronome or with the track or whatever you're doing <laughs>